we want to think about the people we lost, what happened 20 years ago. But before that, let's talk about today, because today is Charity Day, once again at Cantor Fitzgerald. Explain what that is and how it's going so far. All right, so on uh, the day closest, usually on September 11th, but because it's on Saturday this year, we're doing it today, Friday. All of our employees waive their day's pay, and we ask all our clients to do as much business with us as possible. And we don't give away our profits. We give away every dollar of revenue to about 150 different charities, and, uh, and we support the charities of our employees. We support the charities of our clients, and then we set some money aside, and we do huge uh, disaster relief efforts. Uh, we've been to Houston, we've been to Puerto Rico, we did Hurricane Sandy. Whenever there's a huge problem, we, we step in and, and we help, you know, poor families out. And, uh, and so that's what we're going to do today. We're running about 8% above last year, which is really good. Um, we tend to raise about $12 million. Basically, we raise between 10 and $11 million, and then I top it off to $12 million every year. So we're hoping to raise $12 million again this year to, to give it away. And, and all these people behind me, they're working their tails off, and they're donating every penny. So these are amazing people standing behind me. Yeah, it's an extraordinary thing you've done for so many years now. Uh, do you have a sense, over the years, how much total you've been able to raise? So over the years, we've given away $350 million. Uh, we gave $180 million. First thing was to the families of those we lost. We focused on them, and then we turned our attention after five years uh, to these other uh, extraordinary institutions. So a total of $350 million, counting the $180 million we gave to the families. And, of course, we paid for 10 years of the health care those families as well. One of the things that's so important in anniversaries of any type, but particularly this one, is to give a moment or two to remembering those we've lost. Why don't you talk about that, particularly you lost your own brother. Right, so uh, we lost, we were on the 101st to the 105th floors of the North Tower, which was the first one hit. Every person who was at the office that day was lost. Uh, and we had an interesting uh, rule at the company. We, we chose to only work with people that we like. So we would tell everybody, look, you, you've got winning friends. Let, let's hire those winning friends. So we all hired our friends. I had my brother Gary. I had my best friend Doug. I had a brother-in-law of my other best friend. But that was true of the whole company. So imagine how tight this company was, and then we lost them all. So we had, you know, 300, you know, just so many people, 658 people. We had, we had funerals 20 a day for 35 straight days. It was mm -hmm. pulverizing. And there... You know, so tomorrow we're going to uh, go down to the memorial. Uh, we have a lunch of the families all together, and then we show pictures of the people that we lost, and we read their names, and we just remember them, and we do it all together. And it's really just powerful because everybody in the room uh, understands each other, and we understand each other, and, uh, and we remember together, and it's, uh, it's really uplifting. To many of us who watched that at the time, it was remarkable that Cantor Fitzgerald survived at all as a, as a going concern. Give us a sense of how it's doing now and compared to where it was then. So we had, we had about 2,800, 2,900 people around the world, and we had uh, 960 in New York. So we lost 658, so we had 302 left. And then we had secretaries without bosses. So for the first couple of months, I helped other people get jobs and places so they could work. So we ended up with about 150 people starting on January 2nd, 2002, in New York. And uh, so now we have a, just under 5,000 people in New York. We have about 12,000 people around the world. Um, this company was built on the shoulders. Think about this. Right after 9-11, we said, look, there's two choices. We could shut this firm down and go to our friends' funerals, or we're going to have to work harder than we've ever worked before but the only reason to work harder than we've ever worked before is let's, we're going to give 25% of everything, not our profits, but our salaries, 25% of everything to the families of those we lost. And then we started hiring people with that model. Imagine I say, look, I'd like to hire you for $200,000, but I can only pay you $150,000, and we're going to send $50,000 to the families. The people who joined us were unbelievably special, and it was on their shoulders and on these employees' shoulders that we rebuilt this company because they were building the company, but they were also taking care of the families. And it was that model that drove this company to survive, drove this company to, to succeed. Because remember, each com person who joined the company agreed to give 25% of their salary to the families of, of those we lost. So these were incredible people. And that's why you can tell I am the most proud CEO <laughs> to be standing in Canada Fitzgerald, because the people at this firm built this company on their shoulders, and, I, and my insides are all stitched back together, having been ripped to shreds on 9-11, having lost so many friends. 
because the shoulders that I stand on are the people who work at Cannon Fitzgerald. They are, they are amazing people. Yeah, we certainly can sense your pride and we can understand why you're so proud. Uh, finally, give us your take right now on the broader question of the ways in which the entire financial industry may have been transformed by 9-11. Is it a different industry because of 9-11 or is it just a matter of technology really gaining traction? Well, I think 9-11 I think gave it that, you know, a big push forward. This pandemic gave it again another gigantic push forward. I mean, technology... Uh, is the right way to do a lot of our jobs. You know, the, you know, computers can help really smart people do things. And so the combination of really smart people and technology is the way the world's going to go forward. 9-11 uh, began it, and the pandemic certainly pushed it, right? You've got people can work from home now, can do Zoom meetings and things like that. But you're going to see technology play an ever, ever stronger role in finance and in technology. You're going to see uh, you know, distributed finance become an ever bigger part of the world out there. But it's always based on smart people. Don't assume that technology is going to replace people. It's just going to augment really smart people who are capable of doing their jobs.